Hey guys, in this tutorial, I want to show you how you can add life to your background images using a single speed light. Now on the screen now, you can see a beautiful interior where the sunlight is streaming in and it creates a beautiful effect. Now compare that to a similar interior where there isn't any sunlight. It looks really flat and doesn't have any life. So adding sunlight to the image really brings it to life compared to where you don't have any light streaming in. So you can see in all these examples, it's the sunlight that gives it the depth and adds life in all these images. Now it's used a lot in uh, interior and, and, and lifestyle photos and catalogs, and it can really add a lot of mood and depth to your images. So if you're shooting an interior and sunlight calls in sick that day and you want, still want to get that life in your images, here's what you need to do. So on the screen now, I've got an example of an interior where it was overcast outside and you can see that the light is really flat. There isn't a great deal of life in the room. Now have a look at the difference when the sun comes out and you start to get these little splashes of sunlight in the room. It really makes a difference. It brings that image to life. And so what I want to show you is how you can simply recreate this kind of effect, or I believe it looks a bit better because you can control it a lot more using flash. So if you have a look at the outside of this room, the light is hitting the wall and it's shining through either the slats on the left of the screen or the window on the right. Now to recreate this sort of light, all you need to do is have a speed light outside and up high shining in through the window. And this will give you the effect of uh, sunlight streaming in through those windows. Now the thought process behind this style of lighting is the further your light is away from your subject, the harder the light source, because the further your light source is away from your subject, the smaller the light source becomes. And that's why using a speed light is so effective to recreate the look of hard sunlight. Now your settings for this using a speed light is you want to be shooting with the flash off camera. So you want to be working in manual mode and you want your zoom setting to be as narrow as possible. Now I'll give you a detailed explanation of how you can change the settings on your speed light shortly. But if your speed light allows you to narrow the zoom settings to 200, then you go to the narrowest that your particular flash allows you to shoot in. And by doing that, what you're doing is you're making the light source much narrower and harder. And then you want to be shooting at full power. And it's a matter of taking a shot, seeing how it looks. If your sunlight looks too bright, then you can adjust the setting of the power setting of your flash by turning it down if you need to. So to recreate sunlight and you want to have that beautiful, those beautiful splashes of light in your room set, you've got your speed light set high and uh, a fair distance from your window. So here's an example using this technique where I've shot through the window and created this lovely little splash of light and I can do the same when I position the light outside the slatted window and it gives a beautiful little splash of uh, looks like Venetians on the floor and it, it gives a really interesting effect. So you can use this to add life and give that, that look of sunlight 
streaming in through your windows. When you're shooting an interior, what you want to be doing is exposing for the interior and getting that exposure correct and then you're adding the flash the exact same way as you shoot uh, portraits with fill flash you'll expose for the background get that looking as you would like it to look so you want a good exposure make sure the room looks good and then you add the flash another thing that you need to remember is that sunlight is actually quite warm so it's a good idea to add a color temperature orange gel to your flash and you can experiment with different strengths quarter half full cto to get the look that you want so if you had uh, you wanted to create a sort of a late evening sunlight that was streaming through you might want to go with a full CTO gel and if you wanted to create something that was more midday light where the light is a lot more neutral then you might want to only use a quarter CTO gel. Another really cool thing you can do is MacGyver your own set of windows. So if you're working in a room that has less than interesting windows, there's no detail, it's just a large plane of glass and you want to create that slatted look, then you might want to invest in a, a cheap set of Venetian blinds and you can hang those up in front of your speed light and shine the speed light through. So you're going to create that slatted look even if it doesn't exist. No one's going to know that there weren't any Venetians in the room. So this can add like lots of interest and life to your background. If you're not sure how to set up your speed light to do this sort of photography, then here's a far more detailed explanation of all the settings and how to configure your speed light. Now, when you're shooting in auto mode or TTL with a speed light mounted onto the camera, you'll notice that the focal length which is uh, this little number here in the top right hand corner will change depending on the focal length of the lens that you're using so as you zoom out to say 24 the the focal length on the flash will change to 24 millimeters as well and as you zoom in like longer and longer the flash focal length will also change. Now, the reason for this is that the, the camera and the flash will work together to only illuminate the area that you're focusing on. So if you're focusing on a wide area, the flash is going to light that entire area or give you a wider uh, flash focal length. And if you're focusing on a narrow area where your field of view is much narrower, the focal length or the area that the flash is putting out is going to be a lot narrower. You can also change the focal length of your flash if you're shooting in manual mode and say you have your flash off camera. And this is particularly handy if you are shooting say a smaller group or a single portrait or you might be lighting a large group and you have the flash off camera and set to manual mode. Let's have a look at how that looks like in a diagram and what the spread looks like. So when you're shooting at 24 millimeters and your flash focal length is set to 24 millimeters, you're going to have a much wider beam. The, the flash angle is going to be uh, much wider and the coverage will be much greater. As you make the flash focal length a lot narrower, the beam is going to be a lot tighter and a lot narrower. And then some flashes will allow you to bring that angle all the way in to 200 millimeters so you get a very very narrow beam. Now where this gets interesting is 
if you want to create, say, a very hard light, and let's say you want to replicate something like sunlight, or you want to give a more dramatic look to your shots, and you want to create a harder shadow, then you want a smaller, narrower light source that is going to be uh, replicate something like sunlight, which is a small, hard light source. So the narrower your flash beam is, the harder that light source is. So to configure your flash, what you want to do is find the function that changes the zoom setting. Now on a Canon, it's that little dial there on the far left hand side. If you push that, it'll highlight the zoom function and then you can use your dial to increase uh, or, or decrease the focal length of your flash. So you want to set your flash to as narrow a beam as it will allow. So some flashes only go to a focal length of 105 while others will go up to 200. So you want to set it at the narrowest beam that your flash will allow and that will be uh, give you the hardest light source.